Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are discussing the first railway. Don't get me wrong, railway simply means a track of steel rails along which the train runs. Railway was invented long before steam power. First let me tell you the definition of the word locomotive. According to Wikipedia, a locomotive or engine is a rail transport vehicle that provides the motion power for the train. If a locomotive is capable of carrying a payload, it is usually rather, uh, rather referred to as a multiple unit motor coach, rail car or power car. The use of these self-propelled vehicles is increasingly common for passenger trains but rare for freight. Traditionally, locomotive pulled trains from the front, however, push, pull, Operations have become common where the train may have a locomotive or locomotives at the front, at the rear or at the end. Most recent railway have begun adopting DPU or distributed power. The front may have one or two locomotive following the mid train locomotive that is controlled remotely from the lead unit. Now a bit of a history. The first railway was invented long before steam power. The day all case was a six kilometer long railway that transported boats across the current isthmus in Greece in the 6th century BC. Trucks pushed by slaves ran in grooves in limestone tracks. The Deolkes ran for over 1300 years until 900 AD. Railways were reinvented in Europe in the 14th century with wooden track rails to guide horses and hand carts taking ore out of the mines. In the 1700s, English ironmen began to make rails of iron. First the rail was wood covered in iron, then the whole rail was made of iron. Iron wheels with flanks or lips ran inside the track. In 1805, Cornish engineer Richard Bege built the first successful steam railway locomotive. Travintaki's engine pulled a train of five wagons from nine tons of iron and 70 men along 15 kilometers of track at the Penden Iron Work in Wales. On, to, on 27th of September 1825, George and Robert Stevenson opened the world's first steam passenger railway, the Stockton and Durnington in England. The gauge track width used for the Stockton and Darlington was 1.44 meter, the same length as axles on horse carts. This became the standard gauge in the US and much of the Europe. The English built Stockton Lion with first full-size stream locomotive to run in the USA. It ran on wooden tracks in Peninsula in 1829. Now that we have the history out of the way, we will talk about the modern trains. There are many types of trains in operation in different parts of the world, which include but are not limited to high-speed trains, High-speed trains are generally defined as trains that can operate 125 meters per hour or faster. High-speed trains generally connect large metropolitan areas and are meant to be competitive with airlines in terms of overall travel time. Intercity trains is the second one. Intercity trains generally mean trains traveling long distance connecting metropolitan areas. Although the distance covered by some of these trains are comparable to airlines intercity Trains generally operate at highway speed. Long distance intercity trains may provide amnesties not found on most other form of transport, including sleeping cars and cafe dinner cars. Number three is commuter regional train. Commuter trains generally mean trains uh, connected to suburban areas with the central city and primarily serves riders to and from work. Commuting trains typically run, run week, typically run on weekdays during rush hours and only in the peak direction. Rapid trains, rapid trains, which is also known as metro, subway, and heavy heavy rail, means trains that generally serve the urban core, have large passenger capacity, and operate totally separate from the rail traffic, road traffic. In order to run separately from road traffic in the core city, tra rapid transport trains, which run either above or underground. 
light rail light rail which might be also known as trolley or streetcars means trains that function as local traffic uh, local transit in an urban core and can operate on the street level compared to rapid transport light rail costs less is more pedestrian friendly but has less passenger capability capacity the major advantage with light rail is that it can operate like rapid transport and like local buses depending on the available infrastructure number 6 is modern street car in cities such as portland and seattle they have an urban streetcar system that can somewhat compatible with operating separately from their light rail system those streetcars typically have smaller dimensions and operate at slower speed than their lightweight counterpart the streetcars are meant to facilitate circulation in the urban core and serve as a catalyst to transport oriental developments rather than connecting nearby suburbans with downtown hopefully you've learned a thing or two about trains this is your host mohsin bukhari signing out